a record of 35 victories and no defeats, including two consecutive wins over Sugar Shane Mosley, Vernon Forrest became the wonder kid of the welterweight division. But two losses to Ricardo Mayorga and a series of injuries derailed his career. Now, he's fought his way back into boxing's top echelon, winning the WBC's 154-pound belt. Tonight, the resurrection continues as he takes on a title holder of a different sort, the contender champion, Sergio Mora. Closely paralleling the career of Vernon Forrest is recently dethroned champion Paul Williams. This tall, undefeated welterweight champion had compiled 33 wins and owned an air of invincibility. But four months ago, he was embarrassed for 12 rounds by decided underdog Carlos Quintana. Tonight, Vernon Forrest hopes to continue his resurgence. And Paul Williams vies for revenge in a night where the stakes are resurrection and redemption. Busting out on Showtime Sports, and it all starts right here in scenic New England. Yes, we're at Mohegan Sun in Uncasville, Connecticut, one of the most popular resort casinos on the East Coast. Welcome to America's Fight Night. The fans always enthusiastic and spirited here at the beautiful Mohegan Sun Arena tonight. They'll be treated to a world title doubleheader. In our main event, three-time champion Vernon Forrest will defend his WBC Super Welterweight crown against undefeated contender series champion Sergio Mora. And for openers, the rematch of a very entertaining first encounter between Carlos Quintana and Paul Williams with the WBO Welterweight Championship on the line. It's fight night in Connecticut. Hello again, everybody. Steve Albert from Mohegan Sun. Tonight's storyline offers a stark contrast, an aging champion in one title match and a young former champion in the other. In 2002, Vernon Forrest convincingly defeated Shane Mosley. Going in, Mosley was considered the best fighter in the world. So coming out, what did that make Forrest? Ever since, Forrest, now 37, has been trying to recapture the glory. After outpointing Antonio Margarito, 26-year-old Paul Williams was considered a superstar in the making. But then he lost his welterweight title to Carlos Quintana. Tonight, he gets the chance to regain not only the title, but his reputation as well. With that, let me bring on my ringside partner, Al Bernstein. And Al, all four fighters on tonight's card have something to prove. Yeah, and you'd think they wouldn't because amongst them they have 123 fights and only four losses, and two of those are by one fighter. But this is boxing where every silver lining of every cloud has a dark spot. And, you know, for Vernon Forrest, he hasn't lost in five years, fighting very well, but at 37 years of age with injuries in his recent past, many wonder, can he keep it up? Now, Sergio Mora has never lost. He's 4-0-1 since he won the Contender Series, but even he admits he was subpar in his last two fights, and most observers feel he has avoided big challenges. Tonight, he can disprove both assertions. Carlos Quintana has had only one bad fight in 26, a loss to Miguel Cotto, yet there is a strong sentiment that his win over Williams was a fluke. Now, he wants to prove that a myth tonight. Paul Williams, still just 26, is only one fight removed from his storing win over Antonio Margarito, and yet his only loss as a pro, as many suggesting he was overrated to begin with. Fair or not, all these questions about these fighters are real. And Al Forrest, very out of character, took some verbal shots at Mora. We're used to hearing that stuff, but not from the normally reserved and respectful Vernon Forrest. 
Coming up first, Carlos Quintana and Paul Williams meet for the second time in four months, a reprise of an upset of the year candidate in which Quintana shot the boxing world with a sensational win over the previously unbeaten Williams. Now. Well, you know, Steve, there have been many theories floated to explain Carlos Quintana's upset win over Paul Williams. Most of them center on Paul's preparation, both physical and mental, which suggests that the X's and O's of that bout and what Quintana achieved were irrelevant. I beg to disagree, and that's why tonight's strategies and techniques are very important. It's especially important for Williams, who lost the first fight. One of the improvements needed is doubling the jab more often. He missed a lot of his punches high in the last fight. He needs to aim for Quintana's chest. The straight left is not as available against Quintana. His right hook landed more often in the first fight. In awkward inside action, Williams takes advantage of Quintana's low hands to land this very big right hook. Carlos Quintana created angles that did not allow Williams to set and deliver big punches. He needs to do that tonight for sure. Williams may unload a huge volume of punches early. Quintana needs to keep his poise during that onslaught. And Carlos was surprisingly effective in delivering the left hand in a variety of ways. When Williams missed with punches like this right hand, he often went off balance. Quintana was able to deliver good straight lefts. Quintana hopes for more of this tonight. Going into his last fight, Paul Williams was viewed as not only one of the best young fighters in the world, but one of the most avoided. The tall southpaw was a significant favorite to beat Carlos Quintana and seemed destined for a mega fight with Miguel Cotto. Simply put, he was supposed to win. But Al, the punisher was punished in a stunning loss. Was he looking ahead? Does Quintana have his number? Was it merely an off night? Or was he overrated? A lot of questions, and you know, it may boil down in this rematch to whether Paul Williams accepts that Carlos Quintana may have done just a couple of good things in that fight, and it wasn't all about him. For his sake and for his fans' sake, you hope he made some adjustments for this fight. Well, he's very loose as he waved to the crowd, acknowledging the fans. So the big question tonight, how will Paul Williams respond in his first fight since his first defeat. The odds makers have their answer, making him a slight favorite, despite the fact he was dominated in the original by Carlos Quintana. given the way he was overpowered by Miguel Cotto and the way Williams beat Margarito. And interesting how he was exposed by Cotto in a brutal loss, yet he exposed Williams. Quintana outboxed and outslugged Williams Al, but tonight he's got to prove himself all over again. And he feels that, and I think he is happy about that. You know, it will motivate him to perform here tonight. You know, he thought it was an aberration that he was such a big underdog in the first fight against Williams because the only bad fight he ever had was against Cotto, so he thinks he will prove again tonight. He's just better. Well, he's clearly the crowd favorite. We'll see if Carlos Quintana, at age 31, has another fight of his life left in him. Let's size him up as we check the tail of the tape. Williams turns 27 next month, but the focus on his height and reach. He's four and a half inches taller with a whopping nine-inch reach advantage. And boom, 
trim and ready. Judging by their weights from yesterday, you recall Williams struggled with his weight before the first fight. And the notable unified rules for this world title fight. There's no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. A fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round. If an accidental headbutt causes a fight to end within four rounds, it's a no decision. After four rounds, they go to the scorecards. And if a punch causes a cut and the injured fighter can't continue, he loses by TKO. So here at Mohegan Sun, a rare immediate rematch, Quintana Williams two for the WBO welterweight title. The formal introductions from our ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you and welcome to Mohegan Sun Casino Resort here in Uncasville, Connecticut, as we have a big night of action coming your way, brought to you by Gary Shaw Productions and Showtime. Attraction is made possible by Debella Entertainment and Houston Tudor Promotions and is sanctioned by the World Boxing Organization. President Francisco Valcarcel, Supervisor Luis Perez, along with the Mohegan Tribe Department of Athletic Regulation. Introducing to you our three judges scoring this bout from ringside from Avon, Connecticut, Glenn Feldman, from Suffield, Connecticut, Don Trella. And from Rivervale, New Jersey, Steve Weisfeld. Introducing to you our third man of the ring, a referee in charge, hailing from Brooklyn, New York, Ed Claudio. All right, fans, here we go. 12 rounds of boxing in a rematch for the WBO Welterweight Championship of the World. Introducing to you first the challenger on my left, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black trunks with gold trim, hailing from Aiken, South Carolina. He weighed in at a trim and ready 145 and three quarter pounds. With a fine record of 33 wins and one defeat, he has 24 wins coming by way of knockout. Currently ranked the number one contender. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the former WBO welterweight champion of the world, introducing Paul, the Punisher, Williams. And his opponent across the ring, the defending world champion on my right, fighting out of the red corner, wearing blue trunks with silver trim, to give instructions, 12 championship rounds of boxing schedule. All right, Paul, Carlos, Paul. Okay, Paul, Carlos, you receive your instructions in the dressing room. We're going 12 rounds or less for the WBO Waterway Championship of the World. Uh, I believe it's a little high, Paul. Let's bring it down some. Anything from here on down is going to consider low, okay? All right? Okay, all I ask for is a good, clean fight. Obey my commands at all times. Protect yourself, fellas. Ya tú sabes, Carlos. Una pelea limpia. Protege todo el tiempo. Y escúchame con lo que con lo que te diga de cuál lado. Touch him up. Let's get popping. The height differential immediately noticeable. Didn't bother Quintana the first time. The skillful champion has to be confident. He outclassed Williams early in the first go round. Okay. Williams said he'll be more aggressive at the outset here in this Turn. sequel of Southpaws. He certainly should be highly okay. motivated. Box. Here we go. Two left handers, Paul Williams. And the black trunks a boxing anomaly in that he's a tall, lanky fighter who usually puts pressure on his opponent. But in the first fight, he was befuddled by Quintana's constant movement and angles. Quintana in the blue trunks with the white trim. 
Typically, Williams throws over 100 to 125 punches around, but what does it mean if they don't land? So the onus is on Williams to adjust, and has he learned from his mistakes? And he landed a right hook right off the bat. That's the punch they landed more often against Quintana, not so much his straight left, and Trude anticipates. Nice right hand got in by Quintana. You'd think Quintana shouldn't have to change much of anything, but his people said there will be a few surprises. What do you suppose they meant? Yeah, that's a, a good question. It might be more pressure from Carlos Quintana as this fight wears on, but certainly early on he'll want to do what he did before, and that is counterpunch and land those kind of left hands, which he did throughout the first fight despite the height advantage for Williams. The straight left and the right hook by Quintana was tremendous in the first fight. It was a... A good right hand by Williams. Williams clearly has to bring more passion, more energy, more pressure. Got to attack the body. Keep Quintana at the end of that long jab. Take Quintana out of his comfort zone. Williams landed. Oh, there you go, there you go. Williams jumping all over Quintana. Quintana almost went down. Quintana is running. round there's plenty of time for Paul Williams Quintana down for just the second time in his career he went down to the first round against Joel Julio came back to win by decision how will he fare here what a reversal of force and another left lands Quintana's in trouble Claudio steps in the fight is over what a bounce back by Paul Williams who recaptures the title in emphatic fashion this quick an ending and it put Paul Williams back on the map in a major way he said he wanted to bring more passion and energy I think he did a dazed and disoriented Carlos Quintana very disappointing for him. He thought he could show that that first win was not an aberration. What's up, Kodo? Talk about retribution. We'll see how it happened. Very close first round until that straight left hand stunned Quintana. That changed this fight inexorably. And... Quintana was trying to kind of stay out of harm's way. Then the right hook there and a straight left created more damage. And now Carlos Quintana in major trouble, getting ready to go down for the first time. And as we take a look at how this first knockdown was created, Quintana tried to stay close to Williams so he wouldn't be hit with these shots. But Paul Williams is a good inside fighter, even though he's a big, tall guy. And you see him making the most of his opportunities while Quintana, Quintana was inside and then finally was able to get another one of those straight left hands in. And with about one minute left in the round at that point, Carlos Quintana was in major trouble. Then the second knockdown. Williams again landing hooks, straight left hands, setting things up with the jab. And even though he's throwing a lot of punches, he's making the most of those punches. And once he got against that corner, Carlos was in major trouble. And at this point, referee Claudio stopping the match when he went down the second time. Very important nuance. Williams setting up that left hand with the jab. Even though he had uh, Quintana in trouble, he didn't forget about his boxing basics. And that's very important. You know, Paul Williams hasn't had this kind of big knockout victory against top welterweights. That's why, for a guy that's called the Punisher who knocked out a lot of people earlier in his career, this is an important win. Paul Williams, who reported to the arena at 156 pounds, gets his revenge. Let's go up into the ring. And the official word from Jimmy Lennon Jr. 
Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of two minutes, 15 seconds in round number one. A referee in charge, Ed Claudio, stops the contest. He is the winner by way of technical knockout, and he is once again the WDO welterweight champion of the world, Paul the Punisher. What a feeling of satisfaction for this young man. Paul Williams climbing back onto the throne once again, the WBO welterweight champion, lifting his record to 34 and 1. Paul Williams and George Peterson, his manager, said it was all about what he didn't do in the last fight. They said when we land punches like the straight left that he's landing here and put our punches together, Carlos Quintana, Quintana will go down, and they were right because Paul Williams got it done. Well, they both went down, but Quintana went first. Let's go up to Jim Gray. All right, Steve, thank you very much. Paul, congratulations. I know how much this has bothered you since the last fight. What was the major difference tonight? Was it in your training? Was it in the fact that you were five pounds lighter tonight? What exactly was it? You know, I had a, we, had a, we had a good training camp, you know what I'm saying? We had a good spot with Lewis Colazzo, Curtis Smith. Then we got with Dan Robinson, my skill trainer, you know what I'm saying? Put in a, a lot of work. We four o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning. We in there working out skill training and stuff, you know. And you know what I'm saying? Like, I can't take nothing for Quintana. He caught me on the off night, you know what I'm saying? That's what guys do. You catch on off night before they to um, um, get, get this guy out of there. But this time, you know, hey, everything was good, clicking on point. So we came in there and I say, what time? Hey, the power was there. You know, hey, I want to, hey, hey, whoever you want. It's been on How did you feel as though you would respond after your first defeat? Oh, I, I, man, you can't accept winning if you can't accept losing. So that defeat, that's when they say I lost. Okay, all right, let's go have some fun now. You know what I mean? That's how, that's how, that's how I take it because, you know what I'm saying, it's business. But after that, that, that loss, you know what I'm saying, we got back to the gym, me and Mr. Peterson. You know what I'm saying? He gave my time off. Then we looked at the films, what we're going to do. You know what I'm saying? We're going to let this guy come to us this time and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Then, you know, got back in the thing, got this back. You know what I'm saying? I told everybody, you know what I'm saying? My pants are falling, my belt back. You got it back now. What would you like to do with it now that you have it back? What next? Well, I think if I want to go, you know what I'm saying, I want to get some fights with Cotto, Margarita, or, or Della Hoyce, maybe want to retire. You know, hey, you know, hey, I, like, I want to, hey, if the fans pay their money, see something, some action, something good. And I think, hey, hey, I'm right here. All right. Well, congratulations, Paul. Certainly you, was quick work tonight. Thank you for talking to us. Oh, yeah. All right. Champion once again. Back to you, Steve. Awesome. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, Jim so a dramatic first round knockout for Paul Williams to regain the WBO welterweight title in boxing's strongest most glamorous division and how this uh, sets up a plethora of wonderful opportunities for this young man. You know Paul Williams is in a very enviable position not only does he have the welterweight title again he also is a fighter who many people expect to really make his mark at 154 in the near future and now that Floyd Mayweather isn't going to fight Oscar De La Hoya I'm sure he's going to push for that fight uh, and there are a lot of other fights out there for that young man and he and his promoter Danny Goosen very happy right now. A great night for 26 year old Paul Williams back in the saddle avenging his loss of four months ago to Carlos Quintana a first round knockout a stunning first round knockout for Paul Williams.